involved and immersed in that debate. Uh, but we also know from recent experience that while we should celebrate progress, we can't take progress in politics for granted. Uh, despite the fact that there are women in senior positions in Holyrood, only 34% of MSPs are currently women. That's a reduction of five percentage points since the 2003 Scottish Parliament election. So at this particular time, when we have such a significant opportunity to promote equality in Scotland, and to set an example across the world, we must not allow the moment to slip. Uh, last week we saw the SNP and Labour uh, work together. Yes, that is what I said. We saw the SNP and <laughs> Labour work together to launch amendments to the Scotland Bill that would have allowed the Scottish Parliament to legislate on 50-50 representation in our Parliament and in local government. Now, unfortunately, those amendments weren't successful, but there is still positive action that all parties can take and positive action that, in my view, all parties should take. In my own party, there is still work to do to get to 50-50, and I don't mind uh, admitting that, but I am pleased to say that we are making progress. So of all of our candidates for next year's election, 42% of the constituency candidates and 45% of regional candidates will be women. More to do. But when we look at our new candidates, candidates who are not already sitting MSPs, what we see is 68% of the constituency candidates and 52% of our nominees for the list are women. 70% were selected in open contests. So progress being made, we need to keep pushing it forward uh, because we must make sure that as a political system, we're not acting in a way uh, that holds women back, uh, that we're making sure that we do everything in our power to give uh, that opportunity. You know, just to draw my remarks to a close, I want to to reflect on something that in, in some senses is quite personal to me, but in other senses is so important in a public policy sense. When I uh, became First Minister, which uh, will be a year ago next week, um, I was blown away uh, and genuinely moved and touched uh, by the number of women and young girls who took the time to contact me, uh, either by email or letter, or stop me in the street, however they chose to do it, to tell me how much it meant to them. Not anything to do with party politics, but how much it meant to them personally to see the most senior political office in the country held uh, by a woman. Now that made me proud obviously, but it also was a very, very stark reminder of the weight of responsibility uh, that I carry on my shoulders. Uh, but I want the significance of my position as the first woman to be First Minister of Scotland not to be measured by the symbolism of being the first woman. I want it to be measured by the actions I take to help other women for generations to come have a much better chance of being represented in public life, in private companies, in our parliament, and for uh, there to be no barriers in future to mm -hmm. other women becoming first minister. Uh, so uh, I give a personal commitment to doing everything I can. I try every day, every week, to do what I can to mentor young female politicians or others who are interested and I would encourage everybody to do that. I'll continue uh, where I think it's appropriate to call out some of the sexism and misogyny that we see in the media uh, that doesn't bother me anymore. I've got 25 years of experience of it but worries me in the sense that it holds other women back from coming into public life and I'll use the position I'm so privileged to hold each and every day to make sure we're doing everything to advance the cause of gender equality right across our society. You know, the conference asks who runs the world. Uh, it is encouraging uh, that more and more people realise that if the world is to be a fairer and better place, then more women must have an equal role in positions of power. Uh, I mentioned Canada earlier on. I absolutely loved the answer the Canadian Prime Minister gave when he was asked uh, why he'd appointed a 50-50 cabinet. The explanation he gave, the only explanation that is needed is it's 2015. That's why we've got a 50-50 cabinet. So let's keep going uh, and make sure that we uh, fulfil that uh, prophecy I've made today about being at a tipping point. We've got to reach the point where it's not unusual to have female party leaders. It's not unusual to have a female